Hi everyone, I'm Felipe Schmidt, part of the architecture team at ITSM Group. In today's video, we are going to talk about something very interesting, widgets, and how the interaction between the HTML, client, and server works. We are going to do one step-by-step -step in a widget from the scratch, so we can see how we can build in a few steps and we can achieve our goal. So let's start. In today's video, we are going to do something very simple. We have already our widget created. So if you don't know how to create a widget, please refer to some previous videos. And in this widget, we are going to have one button. Whenever we interact with this button by clicking on it, we are going to retrieve some data from the database. So then we are going to see how the interaction between the HTML, the client script and the server script works step by step. More precise, we are going to do that in five steps. This is my preferred way, how I usually structure that. First, I focus on my HTML part in which I have created a button in here called show incidents. From AngularJS, we have the possibility to call the functions by using ng-click. And ng-click is calling my function, which will be set up on the client side. So first of all, there is one hint that is very important. Sometimes we, of course, can use a page and create a page, add the widget to the page to see the result, but sometimes it's useful to do it very quickly, everything from one part, so you don't have to jump into many tabs. You can simply enable the preview in here, and then you have this here. So this is how the button looks like, and we have our ng-click, which we'll call a function. And here, we, of course, we have some classes on to define how the button looks like, but basically we are going to retrieve the last five incidents. That's the focus for this video. Basically, whenever I click on the button, should happen something. Then it's where it starts with the client part. That is our second step. So on the client part, we need to define our function, which I have magically in here, that is called c.myfunction. Then you might ask me, why can't I use this scope in here instead of the C. Yeah, you can, because this is the scope variable and this is the controller variable. But of course, you can always call it like this. And instead of calling it with C.myFunction, you can simply call my function. I will simply comment out this part in here and I will put some console.log. And in here I would say button clicked. And we can open the developer tools as well. So we can see that whenever now I click on my button, it will be calling this function here. So, so now we have our first interaction working, HTML with the client. Next step is how can I retrieve the data from the server? And there is when it comes with two new functions that are very useful when we are controlling the data between the controller and the server. They are called c.server.get and c.server.update. And I have here in a new tab opened exactly one small documentation from this specific website, which I like a lot, serviceportal.io. It helps me a lot whenever I'm unsure about something on the service portal. And here we have that the server.get will call the server, sending this input, which is our, an object, and we return our promise. And this promise will be the result that we are going to display to the end user. The same with the server.update. It will call the server and the data from the server will be automatically updated. It will also return a promise. And we also have the server.refresh, but it's something that we are not going to cover in this video. The goal of this video is only to get the incidents from the server, which we are going to use the get method. Now that we know and we have seen what we are going to use, we can go ahead with this part of the code and I'm going to close the server for now. And in here, now we can see that we have our object and our object contains two properties, the table and the action. The action is going to be something like our function that we're going to call on the server script part in here that we need to define. You will see that we need to scope to say which input we are exactly calling and this is exactly the variable which will help us to define. Then we have our incidents array because we want to display the last five incidents. Then of course we are calling our server with the c.server.get 
by giving as a parameter our object, and then we are getting a promise as a response with our data that we retrieved from the database. Now, if we stop and see where we are, we have our HTML with a button, the button is being clicked, and we have seen because of this clicked in here, now we need to create the functions on the server side that we need to retrieve the data from the server part. There is exactly the point that now we are going to play around with the input. This input variable is reserved whenever a user is interacting with the UI. What do I mean with that? Basically, let's start with an example and we are not restricting only if the action is get incidents, but let's do it like this. And then I will write in here, server called. I will save. Whenever I'm interacting now with the button, I'm seeing that in my logs, the server is being called many times. So whenever the user is clicking in there, the input is being called every time. But if I put here another console, and I will say that server get incidents is being called, we will see, let me do this, that both are being called. Why? Because my button here is defined in the HTML template that is being called by my function. My function is calling the input and this action here, get incidents, which I have defined in this action in here. But that's why I need to define where exactly it's happening. Otherwise, if I only do if input, it's going to be called for everything that the user is interacting with the UI. That's a short explanation to say why we need to scope a little bit more and not simply use if input. And now that we have done this, I also have the possibility to do something even more generic. I can say input.table. And with that here, I would be carrying, and if I do a console.input.table, we are going to see that this is going to be the table incident, exactly as we defined in there. So if I click, I will see that now I will have the incident, meaning that I can always define many variables in here in this object that is going to be sent to the server. So anytime I need some support for some logic that we will carry to the server, I can give here. We can view this input.action as a simply function call and the function name would be get incidents, for example, if we need to translate, for example, to, to similar syntax in here. Thus, what we are doing here on the server, now it's the part that we need to get the data. And for this, we just need to do the normal glide record part, which we are doing with the incident table, getting the active ones, getting five only, and simply pushing the number to the array. One of the important parts in here at this point is that we are saving the ints array into a data variable. This here will be our promise that is going to be sent over back to the client part. You can see this part here as a return for our function. But of course, this is not the syntax in here. We are returning a promise and this we need to set up like this here, data.incidentsList. At this level, we have achieved our fourth goal and now we are missing only one part. Basically as a wrap up what we have right now, button is calling the client, which is calling the server, which is grabbing the data. And now what we need to do is to simply display the data whenever I click on the button. And how can I do that? Well, now we need to see how we are going to get the data from the promise itself. Here at this part, we have set up the response that we are going to get. And in our function c.server.get that we are calling, we have our response variable which contains the data and exactly the incidents list that we need. For this, we are saving the whole data that we need to display to the end user at this variable in here, which we defined first as an empty, but then after we click on the button, we are filling out this array with the information. Now that we have our data stored in this specific variable in here, we just need to show to the end user. And now it's where it comes the point that if you have some knowledge on Angular, it helps a lot because it contains lots of directives that might help you, for example, to iterate in an array with the, for example, with the ng repeat in this case. So if you see here, I will use an ng repeat to simply iterate in each incident from this array that we have defined in here. And then I'm going to simply display the incident number itself.
So if I click here, it will show me and return me the five incidents that we have got from this. The out of the box widgets, they of course use the same logic, but this specific example here was just to simplify as much as possible so that you can apply to any other request that you have. As a wrap up of the video, we have seen that the interaction between the three parts are not complicated. And now if I would challenge you to think about whenever you are coding something to make as much generic as possible, that you could unify this topic that we have seen today with, for example, widget options of a widget. So you can make some configuration on the options of the widget and those configurations would be taken into consideration whenever you were jumping into HTML, client and server. Would be one example for you to try.